Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life, the door. If you believe in him, you shall be saved. Cause God's free gift to you is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Once again, it's good to see every one of you here today. We've had a wonderful service this morning. We've had a wonderful day of fellowship because people stayed between the morning service that where I was preaching at a church on the corner here and the evening service. So we've had a wonderful day, wonderful service and a wonderful day of fellowship. And it's good when Christians can dwell together in unity. <coughs> I'd like you to turn your Bibles to Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God, and that he hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful and unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations we are going to, I'm going to look again at verse 4 it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name as christians we are called to be a people of gratitude the title of the message i want to speak on is the grateful christian we should be thankful uh, in fact christians should be the most grateful and thankful people on earth because you and I have been have got a lot to give God thanks for but one thing is we have been saved from everlasting punishment in the lake of fire we have been saved from a lost eternity we have been taken from a sinful state and brought into fellowship with Almighty God. We have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his Son. We are no longer under the kingdom of darkness, but we are in the kingdom of light. We are now the children of God. We have been taken from a people that was totally depraved, dead in trespasses and sins, on our way to a lost eternity and we now have been made a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people so we have got a lot to be thankful for and as christians we ought to show by the life that we live that we are thankful to god there are some people by their life they are not thankful you see if you are grateful for what Jesus did, you're going to live for Jesus. You cannot say, I appreciate what Jesus did, but I'm still going on, I'm still going to live in fornication, I'm still going to live in adultery, I'm still going to tell lies, I'm still going to steal, I'm still, because that means that you're not grateful for what Jesus did. If you're grateful for what Jesus did, then you'd be living for him. So our life is gratitude. It's not a question of walking around saying thank you, thank you, thank you, but showing by the life that we live, we are thankful. I mean, if a, if a man says to his wife, 
I am so grateful that I've got you as my wife. I love you so much. But he spends more time away from home chasing other women. Do you think he's really thankful to his wife? Do you think he's really grateful for his wife? We show not by so much what we say and what we say is important, but there's also the old saying that actions speak louder than words. And we should show by the life that we live. That is why the Bible says whatever we do in word or in deed, we are to do it in the name of Jesus. We are called to be a grateful, Christ a grateful people. But the truth is that many Christians are not grateful. They are not thankful. They give an outward expression in the church that they are thankful. But you really see by their life they are not thankful. The fact of the matter is they say, oh Lord, I love you so much. I love you. They're standing in the church and say, I love you. And then, but they, the first opportunity they got to miss church, they miss it. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about when you have to work. That's different. That's, that's different. But I'm talking about like, like when my wife uh, when my wife was nursing, she couldn't make it to every service. They don't close down the hospital so the nurses can go to church. So obviously there are times when you do have to miss service. But there's a difference between saying that, um, there's a difference between saying that and then staying at home because your favourite programme is on television. That's a big difference. The fact of the matter is, if you love something, You'd want to be there, like people that love football, they will never miss a game. They will travel from one, they will travel all the way to Germany. In fact, you know, the British supporters love football so much, they went all the way to South Africa just to watch them lose. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't the Guardian team do well? <laughs> But there are people that would do that because they love their they love their thing. The moment people start making excuses for not being there, it shows that they haven't got that. They're not really grateful. They're not really thankful. But you and I, we have to live a life that shows that we are thankful. Thankful to God, and we show that we are thankful to God by being thankful to each other. By being grateful to each other. One of the things that I have got over the years in counselling people um, and some usually it's wives that say this but sometimes it's husbands as well they say I just don't feel that I am appreciated I just don't feel that I am appreciated there's nothing worse there's nothing more hurtful when you go out of your way to do something good for someone and it's just not appreciated. It's just not noticed. <coughs> Some people only give thanks to God in a self-righteous way. If we turn our Bibles, and some of you might just want to write down the scriptures, if you have finding them. But Luke chapter Luke chapter 18. Uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse 11. Look what it said about the Pharisee here. I'll read from verse 10. It says, Two men went into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and one was a publican. Now, normally, you probably think to yourself, <coughs> the, Christ, the one that was religious would pray the more acceptable prayer. Think about it this way. If you knew somebody who was a Christian and went to church regular, and you knew someone that wasn't a Christian, and both were praying, you'd think that the Christian, a Christian prayer would be more powerful and more acceptable. But we can see here, but what it says it, two men went up into the temple to pray, one a fat, see that's a religious person, and the other a publican. 
the Pharisee stood and prayed, lush of himself. Notice, he was praying to God, but he, he thought he was praying to God. But, the, but, but Jesus said, he prayed to himself. There are some people that when they when they pray and when they're worshiping, God isn't hearing it. They just they just it's just for themselves. This is what he said. He said he, said he prayed last for himself. In other words, God wasn't hearing him. God wasn't interested. His prayer was an abomination to God, and God was not interested in anything he had to say. This is what he said. And prayed for himself, God. I thank Lee. He's saying, he's saying thank you here. But it wasn't really thanks. I thank Lee that I am not as other men. Oh, I thank Lee that, I'll read that again. I thank Lee that I am not as others. Men are, men are extortionists, unjust, adulterous, and even as this. <laughs> This publican, I thank you that I am so better. That man was not praying to God. That man was on an ego trip. His head was getting bigger. But God was not hearing him. And yet, look what he says. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possessed. Notice how many times this I, 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 me, I, I, me, 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 I. Look at the publicans, the publicans that have fall off. And would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. You know, that is the time of, that is the, the sign of humility. Years ago in England, and I think it would, would have been the same in the West Indies, when you done wrong, and you knew you did wrong, you didn't look up at the teacher and look them in the eyes. You kind of stood there like that. Is that right, Sheila? Yeah. You stand there like that. You didn't look them in the eyes. He realised that he'd done wrong, so he would not look up. The first man, he was looking up in his pride and his arrogance, thinking how great I am. But this other man, <coughs> realising who he was, couldn't look up. He standing afar off, would not lift up his would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote himself on the breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And this is what Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to the house justified rather than others. I tell you, friends, when we in a Christian life ever feel that we are better than somebody else, we're in, we're, we're in problems. Whenever you feel that, well, I'm a better preacher than he is. I know more of my Bible, I'm more spiritual than that person is. You're in a dangerous position. God Resist of the proud. God wants us to be humble. Many are like the nine lepers, or the ten, nine of the ten lepers. Jesus healed ten lepers. They all came to Jesus. They all wanted healing. Jesus said, Go to the priest. They were concerned only with themselves. Only one came back to give thanks. Jesus said, did I not ill ten? In other words, Jesus said, the other nine should have come back. But they didn't love Jesus. They weren't grateful for what Jesus did. All they were concerned about was themselves. I am healed. I am healed. meant nothing to him. Many remain ungrateful even when their prayers are answered. 